All right, welcome back to Dink and Rampa. Let's get on with Shira's class trial, I suppose. Okay, um, what skills do we have here? Lost in thought, time limit for the phase, costs three. I'll put a non sure, why not? I, yeah, a lot of this voice I have already, and uh, that's it. All right, that's fine. All right, let's uh, get into it, I guess. Best trial. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. Do we have to do this again? If like... you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. Yes, as we but know. If you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay then. All right. So first off, let's talk about the murder weapon. First, we have to make clear it was used to deliver the fatal blow. Huh. Um. Okay. Locker room dumbbell. Sounds is correct. Uh huh. It appears it was a head wound. That's true. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it be? The. Um. I bet it was an iron. Ah, pipe. I missed. No, that's wrong. Interesting. That certainly would make the. Chihiro's, it appears it the, is not a pipe. What kind of blood? I bet it was an iron pipe. No, I missed. That certainly would be like Chihiro. Chihiro's, it appears it was according to the Monokuma file. What kind of blood? I bet it was an iron pipe. No, no. that's wrong. It was a dumbbell. Dude. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood, and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. I mean, it makes sense. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. Yeah, as that's good. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? Yeah, did you not? Were you not there? I don't remember if you were there. Yeah! If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. Oh, we're going into this anyway. What? Okay. For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element has been added to the non-top debate. Would you like to hear more? Sure, tell me. <sighs> this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your actions. It'll disappear if they hit the lines, so think of them as obstacles. But there's a way to keep the noise from getting in your way. Hit the button to attach the silencer, which you can shoot down the white noise. If you shoot a remark, though, that's bad, so don't do that. Be careful when we hit the silencer. Oh, but if your difficulty is gentle, it won't be fine. Like, don't even worry about it. Just do it. It's fine. The case file. Okay. The culprit is Genocide Jack. Oh, I see. Sure. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible. No. Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on. There's just no proof for it. I don't, I don't agree. No, it's wrong. There's some proof for it. Is it right? I don't know. I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess yeah. it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? 
What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. Yeah, more importantly, probably. it outlines all the specifics of every genocide jack case in exceeding detail. Yes. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every genocide jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Yes. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. No, that's just what you have, Vumi. Uh, no. It's actually bloodlust. Yeah, that's right. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? Are you gonna make me do it? The other characteristic of every genocide jack case, which the world at large doesn't know, I'm not mistaken, has to do with the of the body. Uh, how it was positioned? It was all strung up. Apparently, in every genocide jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Yeah. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? I mean, I'm not totally buying this because, like, there is a case file available to everybody in the library. Or at least, I think it's available to everybody. I don't think that back room is locked. So anybody could have went in there and looked at it and been like, Oh, that's a good idea for a murder. I mean... Yes. In fact, it's Toko. Wait, what? What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You sure about that? You're right! <laughs> what? Hey, okay, wait, hold on a sec. Toko has, like, a lot of phobia or whatever, remember? <laughs> what kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes. And no. Another riddle. Man, why is this gotta be so complicated? It's real for sure, but I feel like I understand it. It means for Genesis Jack to be Toko, but also not Toko. She's not one person, but multiple people, right? Ooh, Hangman Gabbit. Uh. Okay, uh, Z? No. Z? I'm not really sure what this word is. Sch schizophrenia? Schiz sch schizo? Now I understand. What? I've no idea what that word is. Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? I mean, I guess schiz schizophrenia... Okay. Huh? Very well. I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? Dissociative identity disorder. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But still, to go and say that about Ms. Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. That's fair. I got it! You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... Acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not Sorry. to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality mm. that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can't. 
I mean, sounds right to me. So when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? Hmm. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? That sounds right, yeah. Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. <gasps> How? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, How can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? Oh, so she just told you in confidence and... Now you're like, ah, you know, you murdered and it's, you're bad. <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. Don't sound like what? it. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I, mean, I if, didn't ask you to. If you haven't figured out that Bakio is a little bit of an a-hole, I mean, that's on you. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise, it didn't work. There was still a murder. I'm sorry I couldn't keep our promise, but don't worry, never again. I won't let Jedi Jack have control ever again. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promised. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I trying to control it <laughs> but your efforts were useless what a disappointment i hate you well the opening act is nearly finished all that's left is to hear from the person in question directly the person y you don't oh are you, you're gonna do it what are you gonna how how are we going to do this Toko's body suddenly lurched backwards. Each thud echoed across the courtroom. In the next second... Wow! Hello there! Is it me you were hoping to see? Is it... is it that easy? <laughs> okay. Very well. What the heck?! So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? I mean, as we've been explaining, you know, split personalities and all that. Not Toko! That's a loser name! And what happened is a textbook split personality! Exactly. So what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's fault. I don't think you could turn a blind eye to that. <laughs> That's for like sure. They say, sound and murder is mine, sound and murder is body. They don't say that. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> Fun. This is the murderous fiend genocide Jack? This this is this is This is beyond insane. Um Miss Jack uh, uh, Jill 
Can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Just kidding! Then it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid? And another thing. The police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless. I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town! Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. Uh, not necessarily. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm kidding again! <laughs> okay. This should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. I even... A motive? Hmm. Okay. Remember what Monokuma told Tell me more. If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Oh, that makes sense, actually. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. This makes sense. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. I mean, it doesn't sound wrong. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Huh? But I cannot hmm. imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster! Ooh, bringing out the monster. Maybe... Maybe she's totally right about that, but... Something's still bothering me. She said, I need to get some more details out of all of this. What we got... Status of the dead body. Um... Remind me what that is. Okay. You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof I... do you need? <laughs> Give it up. You killed her. Hmm. I just have to focus on remembering Chiro's body. That must have the answer. The proof of his side isn't quite right. Yeah, it doesn't sound right to me. Um, where is the case file? They were mounted in the wall in the same way. They're killed in the same way, but it's not giving me those details exactly. I mean, it sounds right to the case file, but I don't think you it's say that, exactly you really right. Perhaps if you had an alibi. Oh, an alibi! When you compare your past murder modus operandi matches completely. Would you get out of my way, you <laughs> stupid noise? Give it up. You killed her. You say that, but you Perhaps All right, let's try this again. When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. Shoot. There we go. No, that's wrong. Gotta get that noise out of my way. Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think they're pretty close, I but think not there's a slight quite. difference between the genocide jack cases and this one. Yeah. yeah. How's it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! <laughs> I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. Yeah. If that happened to Chihiro, it'd be like if that same Italian 
Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. <laughs> Chef Boyardee. <laughs> this is no creation of mine. Shh. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. Yeah. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. They weren't hit with the head in the head, they were stabbed. For one, the cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. Yeah. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But to hear died scissors, from a blow to the but, head, right? Uh, the hit in the head is not the same thing. Uh, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right. In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce. Could you please stop comparing <laughs> killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? Yeah. Uh... I feel like these two are the same when... No, what was used? What was used? Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope it was to a rope. Her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Scissors. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac. There's yeah. actually one more difference. Huh? Is there? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case. There's a pattern there just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Huh. Cheer was a girl. Genocide Jack has killed the men so far. I got it! Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo! Bullseye right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. They're all dudes. Clearly dudes. They were all... guys? Yep. That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little... Oh my. <laughs> I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! What the hell is wrong with you? You don't act embarrassed. I can't help it! I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fan girl! And the mopey side oh. of me just hates it! BL, huh? Nice. But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged fan madam! So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, <laughs> you wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. I mean, it makes sense. We kinda. Can. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly cur! Lowly cur? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! That does make some amount of sense. I mean, yeah. Plus, 
Whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school? Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high class envy of the entire world scissors. Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? Are you gonna pull out some scissors? Yes. Da, 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 da! Jeez. She's fully equipped. That's right. So I can kill anywhere, anytime. Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you. Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? I mean, it it makes sense but as much as you wouldn't really think so, right? right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal and not some copycat killer or whatever. I mean, Baku knew about it from the beginning. Here's my answer. Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or I mean, internal you, police records. I mean, he told me that he had like a little library like this in his own house, so... Plus, you already looked through the genocide jack file before this all happened. That as well. Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Not necessarily, but like, he has the knowledge to do it. Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Biakia, what's your response? Yeah, what do you say? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. In the locker room, Mr. Suspicious. Very suspicious indeed, wouldn't you agree? Huh? Suspicious? Seems nobody starts the locker room. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Makes sense. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. Ooh, a new element. Sure, tell me. A truth flashback. Game in the weak spot and press the button. No, memorize the weak spot. Only shot once. You change it, it'll disappear. if I understood that completely, but we'll see. So, you said Biakia was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird. What are we on about with this? Okay. If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girl's locker room... If you're a Fumi, yeah. Absolutely exactly. Take it. That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So of course I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? You wish you'd taken me with you? Hmm. So, you said... Oh, 
Oh. But he was acting weird. Yeah. Okay, I see. Because it was before we found the body, before we knew Jahiro was dead. You absolutely take it. Yes, yes. The victim was Chihiro. No, it's wrong. We didn't know there was any victim. I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's with Dracula's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I got him quartering, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with it. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? Hmm. 